Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about a topic that comes up a lot, and that's the question of how to know God, how to feel God, how to hear God's voice. This is such a common question within religious circles, at least Christian religious circles, and you have to ask the question, why is that? Why in a religious group that is all about helping people to know God. Why is everybody asking this question? Why can't I hear God's voice? Why can't I feel his presence? So clearly the answers that are being given within religion, at least within um, Christian fundamentalist religion, which is what I have my background in, the answers that are being given are not satisfactory. So first I'm going to give some background on why so many people are desperately seeking this connection with God and why it seems so elusive. And then I'm going to give you two steps, simple steps on how to change your entire experience of reality, how to turn everything on its head, how to find, experience, know, and hear God in a consistent satisfying and lasting way. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video and share this video and talk to me in the comments. Anything that you want in life, you want because of how it makes you feel within yourself. For instance, why do we want relationships? Because we want to feel low. We want our desires for intimacy and identity and self-worth fulfilled. Why do we want jobs, money, stuff? because we want to feel safety and security and we want the ability to satisfy our desires that we think money and stuff will bring us. Why do people act selfishly? To get something that they think will satisfy their internal needs. Why do people retaliate in anger and lash out at others? To satisfy their own inner urges. We could even talk about criminals, those who torment and hurt others. They talk about urges that are overwhelming to them and they think that they have to perform this evil act to silence that urge and bring themselves peace. How about on the other end of the spectrum? How about people who do things for selfless reasons? Well, these people have discovered that it is more blessed to give than to receive because when you give to someone else, it comes back to you tenfold. We find a deep sense of purpose and worth because of what we are doing for others. How we interact with the world always stems from our own inner desires and motivations and affects our inner experience. And the inner experience of peace or satisfaction of needs or silencing of desire is the experience that we are all after no matter how we go about it. In other words, we are trying to bridge the gap between ourselves and everything else. When we feel a need, we sense ourselves as being incomplete, as lacking something, something outside of us. So we are interacting with the outer world trying to fill those needs, trying to bridge the gap that we perceive between everything out here and ourselves. Or really, because God is all that is, we are trying to bridge the gap between ourselves and God. But the truth is that we cannot find God by simply interacting with the outer world. The reason is because we cannot possess or get or attain anything in the outer world as long as we perceive it as being separate from us. Our perception of the outer world is simply a reflection of our own inner state. And if we are perceiving the world as separate from us, if we experience ourselves as having needs and desires that can only be satisfied by something out there, we see ourselves as incomplete. We don't realize that what we are seeking is already within us. We are already whole and complete. When we are coming from a place of needing to get or achieve something that we don't have to satisfy ourselves, Material things will always appear to be outside of us, separate from us. They are like a mirage that disappears as we get closer to it and then reappears further ahead. As long as we are trying to possess or own or control things in the outer world, we will never achieve what we seek. We can't take a car or a dollar bill or even another person 
and somehow experience that within ourselves. It will always be out here. We can see it, we can touch it, and it may bring us a feeling of temporary satisfaction, but it is not within us. And we only experience what is within us. We are metaphysical beings seeking to have a metaphysical experience of God and physical objects cannot bring us a metaphysical experience. We can't experience physical objects on a being level or a metaphysical level. To summarize, we are doing things and trying to achieve things and manipulate things in the outer world in order to have an inner experience that we think will satisfy us. But we have it backwards. The inner world and the outer world are intimately connected, that we have right. But we will never find peace by trying to bring the outer world within us to satisfy us somehow. It's impossible, it's like chasing the wind. Trying to change our inner state by changing anything outside of us is like trying to stop rain after it's already fallen. It's backwards. It's an exercise in futility. The truth is that how we experience the outer world is a reflection of our inner state. And if we think something in the outer world can satisfy us, that means that we perceive ourselves as being lacking and needy and incomplete. We have to find satisfaction within ourselves first and only then will we be able to experience the connectedness and oneness in everything else. And we're not wrong in looking for that. Here's the thing, we are one with everything else, but you can't experience that oneness by trying to possess it from the outer world and bring it in. You have to start here and then what's within and without flows freely. When we look at the world or at reality or at God as if it or he is something separate from us, as if it or he can give us something that we don't already have that isn't already what we are, we will never see reality or God for what he is. We will never be able to have an inner experience of him. And this right here is what organized religion most often gets wrong about God. So if you ask your typical pastor how to connect with God, he or she will tell you to read the Bible and pray. Reading the Bible is a wonderful thing. However, the Bible is a book. It is an object outside of you. And it contains knowledge about God, which is a wonderful thing. And it is true that when you read it, and specifically people who are already spiritually open and connected, can read the Bible and God can speak to them and the knowledge can go from their head to their heart and they can have an experience of God. But this tends to happen more often to people who are already spiritually aware and connected within themselves. And if somebody has not been taught how to quiet their mind, which most of us have not, then most of what they read will never make it past their head and deep enough into their heart to have an inner experience of any kind, let alone a lasting, satisfying experience. And this goes not just for the Bible, but obviously for any spiritual book that a person might read. How about prayer? Well, I want to emphasize here, first of all, that prayer is probably the most important spiritual practice that you could ever do because God always hears every cry for help. But if we're talking about finding a deep internal connection with God, then we have to stop seeing prayer as talking to a being outside of us. Here's what we have to understand. God is the inner peace, joy, silence of desire, fulfillment, satisfaction that we are looking for in everyone and everything else. And the reason that we are seeking this is because it is an inner experience. We instinctively want the inner experience of God and we try to find it in the outer world. This is why humans do everything that they do. Every choice that we make in our life revolves around finding inner peace. And this is why the topic of free will is so multifaceted. Because when it comes down to it, we are all using our free will for the same end, to find God, this inner peace and stillness that is so elusive to us in whatever way we think will be effective. God is the experience that we are all seeking, whether we are doing it by trying to manipulate others and bend them to our will, or in seeking fulfillment through giving to others. 
God cannot be possessed or bought or absorbed from a book, even if that book is the Bible. God cannot be absorbed in a conversation, even if that conversation is with God himself. The reason is because we're perceiving this book and this conversation to be with someone or something outside of us. We can't get something we don't already have. The outer world will always be separate from us. We can't absorb it somehow into ourselves. The only thing that you will ever truly have is what is in here. Having something or attaining something or possessing something is an illusion. Because as long as you are trying to get it, it will always be out here separate from you. It is only in realizing that you are already that which you seek that you can experience it. God is already within us. We lack nothing. And this right here, this is the secret that allows people to begin experiencing God. The world that we see is an extension or a reflection of what's in here. So if you perceive yourself as being separate from God, as needing to find God somewhere, then in the outer world you will only see things designed to satisfy your desires. But when you realize that God is already within you, then the whole world comes alive with God and you experience God everywhere. Because if God is in here and we are empty, then the whole world is empty of meaning. Something to be gained and possessed and attained to bring meaning to our empty souls. If God is in here and we are satisfied, then the whole world becomes to us the face of God. Because God is the lens through which we see. The world becomes God in form and the distinction between us and the world falls away. And God flows freely from us and into us from everything else. So here's my two steps on how to find a lasting, satisfying, and life-changing connection with God. Number one, if we want to find God in a way that is lasting and tangible and always accessible, we have to stop looking outside of ourselves, stop listening for him as if he's separate from us. We have to look within. Remember, the only thing that you will ever have is what is within you, what you feel, what you experience here on a being level. Not what we know or have or possess, but what we feel. So God is found here. How do we feel God here? There are a number of ways of doing this that can be effective. First, you can practice gratitude and you can allow yourself to soak in that feeling of gratitude for everything that you are thankful for. This practice can awaken you to the immense beauty of what is already within you, which you then start projecting on everything as you find more and more things to be grateful for. Number two, you can practice simply feeling love, giving and receiving love, focusing on that feeling of love for everything and everyone in your life as often as possible because God is love and our experience of love is the experience of God. Metaphysically speaking, God and love are the same thing. So when you feel love for someone else, when you receive love for someone else, that is not limited by physical boundaries. So the practice of gratitude and the practice of focusing on and magnifying love can help you find God within you. But there's another practice that has been more effective than anything that I've done before. Very practically, God is the source of your awareness. He is the source of your being. So to find God, you have to find the source of your being. Simply find a quiet place, get comfortable, close your eyes, and ask yourself the question, how do I know that I exist? And when the answer inevitably comes back, I am. The place in you that says, I am here, I am aware, I am real, that's what you're looking for. That is the source of your awareness. That is God. You and God cannot be separated. You are both spirit. There is no distinction. It's like one ray of light cannot be distinguished from another. You and God are one. Once you find this place of awareness, this I am presence, it may feel to you as a deep, blissful stillness, as an infinite well of love, as an ocean of light 
as a spring of living water within you. It will feel peaceful, blissful, unattached. Awareness, light, love, stillness, bliss, it is all the same thing. That is God and that is also you. It is within you. It is you and it is the only thing that you can ever actually have. You can only have and experience your own state of being. This is a lifelong practice and the more you learn how to tune into God within you, the more deeply you will experience bliss, peace, silencing, and satisfaction of desire, the more you will perceive yourself to be whole and complete and without needs and not dependent on anything in your outer world. Recently, I was listening to Melon Thomas Benedict's near-death experience, and his story is one of my favorites because it really helped me to make and cement this connection. The vast majority of near-death experiencers report seeing a light when they die, and this light they identify as God, love, joy, peace, bliss, awareness. But Melon was an atheist and when he died, he didn't see the light. He found himself alone and afraid. He called out for help and an angel appeared to him and said to him, you need to look at the light. But he didn't point to a light out here, which Melon couldn't see. Instead, he pointed to Melon's heart. And Melon says, the angel explained to him that the light starts in your heart and then it connects to the light outside of you. With the angel's help, he was able to focus enough on awakening his own heart and finding that light within himself that eventually he could see the light outside of himself and he was able to move towards the light and he went on to have one of the most profound near-death experiences ever recorded. So with that in mind, let's move on to step number two. Step one, find God within yourself in your awareness, in a magnification of love or gratitude. Whatever practice works for you, find God within yourself. Step number two, learn to see God outside of you. And this can only happen once you have found God within you in a tangible and satisfying way. When you understand that God is within you, you also understand that God is within everyone else in the same way that he is within you. And there is no barrier between God within you and God within your brother or your sister. And this is called oneness. And at this point, it is not a mental concept of knowing that God is in my brother or sister. It is an experience of bliss. There are different practices that you could take to accomplish the same end. But one of the ones that has been most effective for me, actually there's two, although they're very similar. The first thing I will do is as I'm going about my day, regardless of what I'm looking at, I will say, Christ is in that. Christ is in that tree. Christ is in that home. Christ is in that person. Christ is in that fly. Christ is in this meal. And I don't mean when I say that, that Jesus the man is in the meal that I'm eating and I'm practicing cannibalism. I mean the, the spirit of Christ, the universal light of Christ, God's divine presence, the love of God, the divine presence of God. Many near-death experiencers see when they are on the other side that everything, the, the building blocks of this world is love. So my clothing is love, my camera is love, my lights are love. I am love, you are love, everything is love. And so whether you use the word love or the word Christ or whatever word works for you, remind yourself of that consistently as you go about your day. The second practice that I like to do, I got this from Mark Anthony Lord. Whenever you see a person, you say, God is there. God is there. God in me is being called out to recognize God in them and respond as God would. God is interrupting me in the person that interrupts me. God is calling for my attention in the person who hurts me. Christ is in everything. God is a metaphysical reality of love that is tangible here in physical form in a way that we can touch and see and hear and interact with. In order to experience this reality, we first have to recognize that we are that reality already. 
you are love which is the metaphysical reality of god god is within you and around you everywhere everything is an expression of god we cannot get away from this reality the question is only are we awake to it can we see it or do we still perceive ourselves to be separate from God. Find God in here, in your awareness, and then through that lens, see God everywhere else. Suddenly, the whole world is alive with God. You're no longer seeking an experience of God because you have a spring of living water within your heart and you're swimming in an infinite ocean of love and God is alive to you everywhere. Be loved, be happy, be at peace, and thank you for watching.